Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. It is just one of those days where you're happy to be in the crypto market. And of course, what happened yesterday, uh, Trump was elected and everything uh, fell into place. And um, I think uh, we're right where we are supposed to be. Now, today, the title and the thumbnail, well, the title, the thumbnail is just awful. It's just me. But the title was Day Zero. And I think everything's going to start from here, and I'm going to show you why that is. So let's just break into it, just did a quick recap. First of all, actually, first of all, I should say this. I know some of you out there are thinking to yourself that, uh, you know, my, my, my person lost. Harris lost. I was big into Harris. I've already talked to a couple people already today, text, call, in person. And I hear the same, the, the uh, actual same thing. And uh, you think, you know, you're, this is like the worst thing of all time and things are, gonna, are just going to, you know, collapse. I'm here to tell you that I've been around long enough to realize that for these elections and these things that actually happen, it's not like we're going to go into dystopia and this is going to be awful and everything else. Things will go on. Things will move forward. And I want everybody to move forward now because we're living in democracy. And uh, if it's your person or not your person, I just need you to kind of let it all go and let's move forward. We can only control the things within our sphere of control. And outside of that, what can we have? We don't have much. We just have to control those things within us and move forward. So let's move forward. So right now, uh, this is actually wrong. The, the S&P 500 is not this amount. Let me, ah, here we go. So actually, that's pretty interesting. So you have something like, like this, 2.4% today. And then look at this. This was on, today is the 6th. I don't know what the heck happened last night, but it seemed like the market going into 4 p.m. from here into overnight trading to the opening bell. I mean, people knew it, obviously, because Trump got elected and uh, this was good for the markets. I, I think this is a clear statement of where the markets want to be. I think it's a clear statement of uh, where people want to be. And now here we are. So of course, yes, this is just the S&P 500. I understand. And of course, we take a look at our market. We, we all know this. I don't need to tell you this. I know you looked at your portfolio 20 times today. Don't lie. I know you did it. And that's fine. You should take those the celebrations. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you think like this is a great day, I'm not going to be a moon boy. I'm not going to, to pick you up and put you on a pedestal and say everything's going to be so fantastic but this isn't anything. If you just were around for like 2021 or if you came in afterwards during like the bear market, wait till we get into 2025. Again, a lot of things have to happen. A global liquidity has to be set. Quantitative easing has to continue. Rate cuts have, actually the rate cuts don't have to happen. Rate cuts don't have to happen because we were actually increasing our rates in 2017 and we still went from $1,000 Bitcoin all the way up to $20,000. So, I just take a look at this and I think to myself, I don't know what can go wrong. If it's not a black swan event, who knows? But I mean, it's been a great day. And I mean, I don't need to tell you this because you know it. But I think what's even more important is, is take a step back. When I was in, when I first got into crypto in 2017, nobody in politics, maybe except for Ron Paul, were talking about crypto and digital assets. We were just some nerds on the outskirts that were you know, f fantasizing about internet funny money. None of this was a thing in 2017. 2020, we started to get the Michael Saylors behind us, some institutions were talking about us, some banks, something else. And now it's just gone massively huge. And I want to scroll through this. This is from standwithcrypto.org. And they made a great compilation of all of the congressmen and senators, congressmen and women, senators, that uh, had actually won, well, this is the House of Representatives, and they put them into pro-crypto candidates. And I was pretty shocked. I'm like, wow, there's eight of them. That's pretty good. Eight people. I'm just kidding. Watch this. So as you come here, how many do you see support crypto? Yeah, exactly. How many of these people are winners? All of them. So there's going to be some people, it's, it looked like Hester Pierce, but I guess it's not. There's going to be some of that are, you know, that did win and they weren't strongly supporting. But I'm telling you right now, look at all this is insane. It's amazing to me that we have this many people that actually either strongly support or what is it? What is their, their terms that they say? 
somewhat supports, I'm happy with this. I'll take this as a big W. So, you know, we talk about this. We don't need politicians. We don't need the president of the United States for Bitcoin to be inevitable. I get that. I understand that. But look at the people that are in power, especially in government, and they can slow things down. And who are those people? All these people. So I was just kind of going through this process and just thinking to myself, like, like who, how this all has changed so much. For example, not that we just talked about him in the House of Representatives and also senators that, that are, are coming in, but pollsters and the lamestream media and how poly market, poly market. And everybody's, and you know, some people, most people outside of crypto were laughing at it. Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They called the presidential election perfectly. They also called uh, Senate, which I didn't think they were totally in line with that, but they did. And they did. That's just how it goes. And then, of course, if you're big on to uh, X or Twitter, yeah, there's some misinformation over there, but that's what community notes are for. And no, it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than what I've been seeing for the last 10 years. So things are shifting, that's for sure. And I got to I gotta tell you, even I've been talking with this guy, Alan Lichtman, who has called every presidential election correct since 1980 was wrong in this one. He called Bush... He called Clinton, he called Obama, he called Trump the first time when everybody thought he was crazy, and this one was wrong. So again, times are changing. And then the good news is that people are getting ousted. So not only do we have a bunch of people who are pro-crypto, but this is Chairman Sherrod Brown of Ohio, and he lost his Senate seat. Doesn't look too happy. I mean, I've been unemployed too. It sucks, but hey, I think he'll I think he'll land on his feet. But this is from Bitcoin News, Operation Choke Point 2.0 is main enforcer, Senate Banking Committee Chair lost his Senate seat. Why is that? Because this is the time that everybody starts to realize just how important crypto is. And if you're on that wrong side, yeah, you can make it. Look, I'll go down here. Jesus. I have way far down. Like some of these guys and gals, they're totally against crypto, totally against crypto. And they made it. But you can see how those numbers are starting to dwindle. And that's what I want to see. And the biggest one of all, the biggest one of all that I think is going to get out. And like I said, we don't need these politicians. We don't need these people to make things inevitable. We don't. But they sure can slow it down. And this guy is enemy number one. Gary Gensler needs to go. And no, Donald Trump cannot fire him. It's not true. However, usually what happens when a new administration comes in, they step down. And I got to tell you, I don't, if, if I was somebody who was in, in, in this cabinet, especially the head of the SEC, and I know that some guy wants to fire me, he can make my life a living hell. The guy with the least worries at the end of the day is the winner. I don't know if Gary's got it in him, but uh, I see him stepping down rather quickly. So we'll see. But it's not all rainbows and unicorns and popping bottles. It's uh, There are some losses here. And unfortunately, uh, John Deaton did lose to Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, I, Massachusetts must love, they, they must love this lady. She won 60% to essentially 40%. So a 40-60 split. John got one point, almost 1.2 million votes. Pretty good. Warren got 1.8. And uh, I thought that he could pull it out, but I'm just going to give an open invite to John. John, if you run again, I will support you yet again because I think you are a far better candidate than Elizabeth Warren. And that's not just on the opinion of just crypto. There are many other things I like about John over Warren. So we'll see. So what does this mean for the market? Well, today was an absolute massive trading volume for U.S. Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, BlackRock leading the charge of uh, $2 billion in flow as of 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, right now it is 4 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, which is in Puerto Rico. That means it's 3 p.m., I think, in Eastern. So there's probably still some trading going on. And we can see that IBIT, Fidelity, ProShares did some, Grayscale, ARC-21, 
they all did a nice increase, which I thought was pretty pretty nice. However, I will remind you that uh, as of November 4th, this is from heyapollo.com. We've talked this many times and used this on the show. As far as the flows, as of two days ago, they were selling like crazy. Fidelity, ARK, 50, whatever. Total net flows was negative 7,376. This was the day before the election. And then on the 5th, of course, we got Trump in office. And now the 6th, everybody's buying back in, which is fine if you want to buy at uh, more than all-time highs. That's good for you. Have, have at it. But this is just a reminder that just because big money, I don't want to say it's smart money. Just because big money does something does not mean that it's correct. You have to use your own judgment. You have to use your own research and you have to make your own way. And don't just blindly follow these people just because they do one thing because they're selling like crazy. They're going to hedge their bet. They got billions of dollars. That's fine. But again, it's not like they're right all the time and you should do exactly what they do. You're smarter than that. I know you are. And also another little milestone, a little feather in the cap. Bitcoin is now number nine. As far as an asset classes, it uh, just took over Meta, what was called Facebook back in the day. And uh, it's at 1.475 trillion. That's just Bitcoin alone, not the crypto market. Crypto market is roughly 2.5, teetering on 2.6 trillion. And that means that uh, silver, we're going to be there pretty soon. We could overtake the market cap of silver. Google, Amazon, I don't know, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA. Eh, damn, I didn't know NVIDIA was that high. But I didn't know this. I didn't know that gold, 18.2 trillion. I didn't know it was that high. I thought it was like 11 or $12 trillion, but it has gone up quite exponentially. So I can see us getting into a small piece of that. I mean, just 5%, 10% of gold. Why not? And kind of go from there. So I'm going to leave me to my couple of last points, which is this. You think this is awesome? You think this is great? It is great. You're right. But it's not everything. I want to show you something. This is the return on investment for cycle bottom. This is why I think we're at day zero. Because I know like all the stuff that you guys did and we did, congratulations, we all did it. We all did what we're supposed to do in the bear market, which was not listen to the naysayers, even though it was pretty tough to do, especially when your family, friends, and loved ones are telling you that, why are you throwing sand in the ocean? This is the dumbest thing. You know, this is going to zero. Dan Pena told me, and uh, he's never wrong. And, uh, you know, also, uh, Jim Cramer said that uh, Bitcoin was useless. And of course, he's never wrong. So you guys should just stop doing that. But we knew. This is from Ben's website. As I steal all his information as much as I possibly can. Links in the description. First month, 10% off. Return on investment after cycle bottom. This is our cycle right now. So from here, the bottom was November 10th, 2022. Remember those days? Ah, those were bad days. FTX was out of business and they were going through their trial and we're trying to figure out what the heck happened to Sam Bankman Freed because he was a savant and the greatest trader of all time. Then we realized that he was just a big scam artist and everything collapsed, right? But from here to today, oh, I take that back. This is only, this only goes on November 1st. I'm going to have to have Ben fix this. You're at... You did a 4X, congratulations. You're probably at 5X now. Nah, maybe like 4.8, which is pretty good. But I'd like to remind you of where this sits in other cycles. This is market cycle four. And the bottom of market cycle four was 2018. Remember that? Oh, that was awful. When everybody thought I was gonna go to the moon and didn't. <laughs> and look how far above it is at this point in time, 5.76. What about the cycle before that? Market cycle three. Well, you're gonna see how far away we are. Look at that, that's a nice candle. <laughs> so let's just, when in doubt, zoom out. When you wanna get some clarity, zoom in. This is you. This is the other two cycles. You've got a long way to go. Congratulations, you did it. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. Oh, there is one more thing. If you're in Puerto Rico, I'd like to buy you a beer. So tomorrow, 4 o'clock, over at the San Juan Smokehouse, if you follow me in X, you'll know this, but uh, briskets and beer.
which will be great because that'll be my, my fifth day fast so I can actually start eating food again and uh, probably pounding beers left and right. So if you want to come by, just respond to this and uh, or just show up. I, it doesn't matter. And then I buy the first round and then Steve and the owner buys the second round. That's a pretty good deal. You're welcome. And that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. I appreciate you guys stepping by and just hanging out with me for 15 minutes.